Hello everyone, welcome to Audio Vino, a simple indulgence in fine wine and great books. My name is Kyle, and today we're going to be taking a look at a coffee house mystery with a summer Chardonnay. Stay tuned. Thanks again for tuning in. So, uh, the way this is going to work is we will... I will take a listen to an audio book um, and what I'll do is I'll just kind of give you my review or assessment of the audio book and we're also going to pair that with a fine wine. Today's wine happens to be a Chardonnay from California, Winte Chardonnay and it's their Morning Fog and this is a uh, vintage is from 2018. So a um, little bit about the book here in just a second. First let's open this bottle of wine. So just a little bit about um, the format that we're going to follow and then a little bit about this wine before we get to tasting it. Um, I like to use the 4S method when I taste wine. So we're going to see or sight, we're going to sniff or smell, we're going to sip or sample, and then we will summarize our experience. We'll go ahead and take care of those first three at the beginning of this video. Uh, then we'll talk about the book, and at the end I'll bring back the summary for the book and the wine uh, together. But uh, Winte Vineyards is in Livermore Valley, California. Uh, they produce a large array or variety of wines. Uh, been around for quite some time. Uh, you can go to their website, uh, wintevineyards.com, for more information. Um, but I, I will tell you that I've had this Chardonnay before, and... Um, just a heads up, it's it's really, really good. So, uh, let's pour in a glass and get going on the site. So, anytime I go to look at wine in a glass, uh, looking for clarity, um, looking for any kind of bubbles, the color of the wine, uh, if it's hazy or not, uh, I like to use a sheet of white paper. And I suggest you do the same thing. It's easier just to kind of be able to tip the glass a little bit and see the wine in the glass um, and really get a true idea of the color of the wine and uh, its clarity. So let's go ahead and do that together. So this wine is, uh, when I'm looking at it, is, is very, um, it's very pale, almost to the point of clear. The clarity, again, of the wine seems to be very good. Uh, when we swirl it in the glass, it's got some pretty nice long legs uh, in the glass. So, uh, sight-wise, looks like a really great Chardonnay. Uh, let's give it a let's give it a smell. <sighs> I don't know about you, but there's something just absolutely satisfying and refreshing about smelling a great wine. Okay, on the nose, uh, I'm getting a little bit of maybe peach and some lemon um, is what I can smell. Yeah, the lemon, uh, the lemon is very, very straightforward uh, in the nose. All right, sight, smell, now we take a sip. Cheers. So one of the great things about tasting wine is it just it really is like a playground in your mouth. It, it, you know, you get all these different flavors and tastes and and feels in your mouth and it's one of the uh, just really great experiences that you can have in life. Um, that's my opinion. I'm an expert on my opinion. But uh, initially, the wine is, um, is what I would say is, is medium to high in acid level. Um, right off the bat, I get a, a, a buttery note uh, when I'm tasting this wine. Um, it is dry. Uh, 
some of those lemon flavors are showing up in the taste, and I also get a little tiny bit of honey um, that I can taste. The wine is very smooth. Um, I would classify the finish as a long finish, uh, and it has a refreshing quality uh, to it. Now, of course, if you're unfamiliar, you do need to sh uh, serve Chardonnay cold. Um, so you really want to put it in the refrigerator and then kind of leave it in there maybe in a couple hours and then depending on how cold your refrigerator is and then um, get it out right before you're ready to drink it. So, all right, let's get on to the book and I'll give you my final summary in just a minute. So the book that I listen to, uh, I am a big audiobook fan uh, as, a, as a husband and a dad of uh, four children. I don't always have the time to sit down and a full-time job uh, I, and a part-time job. I don't always have the, the opportunity to sit down and um, just read a book. I love reading, um, holding a book, reading a book, and I, I do that. Uh, and there will be some um, hardcover reviews or Kindle reviews uh, on this channel. That's the plan. But mostly I like to focus on audiobooks. I have really found a, a connection with audiobooks because I'm able to do other things that need um, completed other task chores while I enjoy a good book and most of the time it gets my mind off the the mundane thing that I'm having to do uh, I listen to them in the car when I'm driving to work or when I'm going somewhere uh, to the office wherever um, and, and it's just I can always take the book with me first audio book we're gonna take a look at uh, is called on what grounds and it's a coffeehouse mystery written by Chloe Coyle and the audio book that I listened to was read by Rebecca Gibble uh, it was published in 2011, and the recording is approximately eight hours. Now, I, so, I know some people are indeed very busy in their lives, and they like to listen to audiobooks like on 1.5 or, or two times faster uh, than they were re originally recorded. I don't do that. I just leave them at the normal speed because I think there are some things that uh, we, we can miss or um, interpretations, dialogue effect that we do miss if uh, you do listen to them on a faster pace. Some notes about the about the book. First and foremost, it is a mystery. Uh, it's a murder mystery. Uh, if you are a coffee lover, which no holds, no holds here, I am. I love coffee. I drink three, four cups of coffee a day. Um, I do not just drip coffee. I do, um, we do AeroPress coffee. We have whole beans. We roast, and we roast our own beans too. Um, so I, I love coffee. But if you like coffee, this book is for you. Uh, the uh, author's knowledge of coffee preparation, history, variety, storage, consumption, just the coffee business in general uh, is extraordinary. You will learn something. If, even if you think, oh, I know everything there is about coffee. No, you will learn something about coffee in this book. Uh, even, like I said, even as a longtime coffee enthusiast myself, I learned things I didn't know about the preparation and how to, to drink coffee and enjoy coffee. Ooh, that's good. So the main character in the story is Claire Cosey. And Claire is, uh, she's fun and she's so realistic. Uh, she's a single mom who has raised her own child, Joy, uh, on her own. And Joy has now flown the coop. She's gone to college. And so Claire is kind of taking that final plunge into her career. Uh, she has moved to New Jersey and she's now moving back to New York City uh, to manage a coffee shop called The Blend, which I love that name, The Blend. Um, it, the Blend is located in a unique area of New York called The Village. So we'll, we'll hold on that just for a second. But uh, Claire has always managed to uh, kind of make a living by staying true to her passion for coffee, writing magazine articles, um, just in the food and, and wine and business and coffee industry. So Claire is, is uh, easy to relate to and just a real fun character that who tells the story throughout. The reader of the story, Rebecca Gibble, has a voice that's that's really easy to listen to. Uh, and it kind of fits the role of the main character, Claire Cosey, very, very well. I can, I mean, it's effortless to kind of imagine that Claire sounds and thinks similar to uh, the way Rebecca reads the story. So the voice and the character uh, combination, it's a perfect match. Kudos. Well done. So I don't know a ton about New York City. I have visited New York City. Uh, I actually used to be music oriented. You know, I had a music career and I played a uh, halftime show at a New York Knicks game in Madison Square Garden. 
another story, another time. But uh, for me, the author did a really nice job of blending the actual historical context and regions of New York City with the fictional setting um, of the story. The village is what it's called. There are several locations in the book um, that were referenced that really, they don't really exist in real life. Um, so the ability of the author who kind of intermingle the real streets in New York um, with the small setting of the story was absolutely fantastic. Now, let's talk about recording quality. Uh, I felt that the recording quality of the audiobook that I listened to was great. However, uh, there were a few places where you could tell that some edits had occurred and you know the voice level and the contour of the reader was noticeable. Uh, some of the changes happened in the middle of a, a paragraph and a phrase of a sentence, um, not just at a chapter change. In most instances though, instances though, whew, unless you are listening for or focusing on those cuts, um, you, they'll probably go unnoticed. You won't. You won't even hear them. The worst cut uh, in the book, though, was in chapter 16 of the recording. There, there seemed to be several cuts in a row, um, and maybe it was just a bad day. I don't know. But I did notice that chapter 16 uh, had more cuts than other areas of the book. Another thing that was a little disappointing was in chapter 18. Uh, our girl Claire Cosi, uh, she visits this dance studio of the victim, uh, whose name is Annabelle Hart, and. After schmoozing, kind of schmoozing her way into this uh, dance studio, uh, she meets and talks with Annabelle's dance teacher, uh, who, whose uh, name is Cassandra Connell. The character Cassandra is supposed to have a Jamaican accent in the in the book, or be from Jamaican descent. Although the reader, Rebecca Gibble, does an excellent job, an absolutely outstanding job with all the various accents, especially New York accent in the book, uh, she destroyed the um, Jamaican accent or the attempt at the Jamaican accent. That's okay. We all have bad days. Unfortunately, it's easy to note that, you know, it wasn't done well. In fact, the accent is... Um, it was done so poorly that for me as the listener or the consumer of the book, it was almost distracting from the information that was trying to be, you know, ascertained from the character and the questions that Claire was asking because Claire kind of assumes her own detective role. Um, so it was, it was, it was a distraction, um, certainly. Not that I could do any better. And my last area that uh, I felt probably needed some work uh, was in, near the end of the book, in chapter 28. Um, Claire and her ex-husband, Matteo, which uh, some people will love him, some people will hate him. I'm not giving you my opinion. But uh, they go to investigate, or they're in pursuit of a burglar who has broken into the coffee shop and stolen some very, very important items. Now, this burglar leads them to the bar called Oscar's Wiles. That's pretty clever. And so when they get to this... Uh, this bar, uh, the author notes that Claire, she, she enters into this disguise as, as a male. Um, and, and due to the, to the nature of the establishment, it, it, it's a very party-like atmosphere. There's loud music, there's dancing. Um, in fact, it's so loud that it's noted in the book that Claire is about six feet, seven feet away from the two individuals she's trying to spy on, one of them being the thief at the shop. And she can't even hear them from six feet away. Certain circumstances lead to Claire's disguise being um, thwarted against. Uh, her hat falls off. It's revealed that she's a girl. And this is a mainly all-male club. And everyone in the bar stops what they're doing. You know, it's one of those moments of record screeching. And all the attention is drawn to Claire at that point. It didn't make sense to me. It didn't make sense because... She was just now at the bar and couldn't hear six feet away. And all of a sudden her hat falls off and we see that it's a girl in an all-male, pretty much an all-male bar. And like everything stops. Um, that just, it didn't line up. It, it, you know, and I understand it's fiction, you know, but the everything up to this point had kind of made sense and fallen in line. And it just didn't jive correctly with me. Um, in fact, the best word to describe it would probably be generic. So overall, the uh, the book is is very enjoyable. Uh, it's easy to read. It's fun, um, and, and it's it's a simple story to follow. The mystery revealed at the end it, it isn't a, like a one hundred and eighty degree 
uh, hat trick, or it's not earth shattering uh, at the end, but it's definitely. Uh, it's definitely complete. It completes the story, and it's satisfying. So if you're looking for a fun and lighthearted, simple mystery, uh, or you love a good cup of coffee, uh, this book is certainly for you. So on my overall rating system of four stars, I give uh, On What Grounds by Chloe Coyle, read by Rebecca Gibble, uh, three out of four stars. As for the wine, um, this wine is extremely enjoyable. It's not mind-shattering, great, um, you know, put down $50 Chardonnay, uh, but it's good. And at $10 a bottle, $10 to $12 a bottle, you can't go wrong. If you're looking for a good summer Chardonnay, something you can enjoy on a hot summer day with friends and family as soon as COVID goes away, then I suggest you pick up um, the Winte Morning Fog Chardonnay. Very, very enjoyable. Chardonnay, book. Good combination. Thanks for tuning in to the first Audio Vino. I appreciate you taking a watch. Uh, if you don't mind, hit that sub button, give me a thumbs up, and uh, hopefully we can produce more of these in the future. If you didn't like it, well, sorry, you probably don't have to watch any more. All right, till next time, slow down, simplify, have a glass of wine, and give a good book a go, especially on audio. Cheers. Yeah.